Okay, perfect. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is kind of talk about um, or build upon the, the presentations that we've had that have been talking about stress and how we're managing at this time. One thing that I've noticed with the clients that I've been working with, both with Mind Armor and SOS Psychotherapy, is that people are very much feeling like they're this on this emotional roller coaster. So let's talk about that a little bit more and talk about how we can be using our emotions to navigate this difficult time. So basically, how let's first find out what the mindset is out there. Right now, do you feel that your emotions are simply a reflection of how you feel? So how you feel and your emotions are one, and that's, it's very simple. And, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Let's launch that poll and see where our audience is today. So let's talk about, again, do you feel like your emotions are simply a reflection of how you feel? My emotions basically tell people or tell me how I feel. So we just want to make sure we launch that poll and uh, get a sense of where we're all at with our, our mindsets today. And then once we have a good response, uh, Sergio, if we can please just share the results so people can see where, where they're at, where, where they are in relation to their peers on the call today. Yep, so you want to make poll one live? Yes, please. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. So folks, if you can please uh, submit your responses as to where you think the poll has been now launched. I apologize for the slight delay there. So if you can take a moment and just click uh, agree or disagree in the poll. And then once we get a good number of responses, we will share that with you so you can see the comparison across the board. Because what I have found is that sometimes we oversimplify um, our emotions. And a lot of people think that, yes, it is how emotions are how I feel. It's pretty simple, right? But that's not always the case. So Sergio, can we stop and, and show folks the results of that, please? 70 out of 90 have voted. I'm not sure if you want to give an extra 10 seconds. Okay, let's just give them a few seconds. Thank you. And I think, I think we're good. I think let's just go with what we have, being respectful of time. Wonderful. So we do. We have 70% uh, agree that emotions are simply how I feel. And so this is the notion that we want to address today. So thank you so much for participating in that. So let's go on to see what emotions actually translate to. So if we think of emotions as simply how we feel, they're very sort of one dimensional. Dim dimensional. So if we look at emotions instead as a system of responses, so yes, they tell us how we feel, but they're also connected to our thoughts and they influence our thoughts and thoughts influence our, our feelings and emotions as well. And we knew, know that through the little bit of uh, introduction to CBT that Dr. Devine did. And emotions are also part of our, we have a physical response. So basically, if we look at that sort of triangle, that relationship that we have, that emotions are yes, our feelings, yes, our thoughts, and yes, a physical response, they kind of become a little bit bigger and a little bit more multidimensional. And what that does is amplifies the idea that yes, there's some expressions that are universal and common to all of us. However, not all of us experience our emotions the same way. And by recognizing that point, we are then able to sort of be a little bit more compassionate towards someone that perhaps is experiencing sadness in a different way that we would express or, or feel sadness. Because now we understand that it's not just simply about crying or uh, uh, having tears or being quiet, it can be represented in many different ways where sometimes if someone experiences sadness, perhaps their stomach really aches or their heart aches, or perhaps it leads them to thoughts of alienation or isolation or people withdraw or people 
um, have that desire to connect when they're sad. So everyone responds differently. And I think it's really important for us to recognize that emotions aren't just one dimensional. They are multi-dimensional, which means that no two people experience emotions the same way. And so that we need to be understanding of this, accept it within ourselves and be kind to ourselves, but also to offer that kindness and that acceptance to the people around us and our families, friends, and perhaps even strangers. So I hope that that sort of opens up your mind a little bit on the way that we perceive emotions and the way that we can think about them going forward. Let's do another uh, uh, poll, Sergio. If you can please launch poll number two. Uh, I perceive being emotional as bad. You know, some of us really consider ourselves, ourselves to be firecrackers and very emotional and our emotions are very amplified. Do we perceive that as bad? Do you perceive that as bad? So if you can please let us know it's been launched. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is it sometimes? Do you perceive emotion, being emotional as bad? I know that I'm a very emotional person and I know that, uh, People have sometimes, I, I have felt judgment actually uh, from people saying that, oh, you know, you're just so, you know, um, so emotional. And it usually only comes out when it's what we call the negative emotions, like when I'm sad, angry, scared, um, you know, uh, feeling bad, then I'm considered emotional and it's not very friendly or it's not desirable. Whereas if I'm happy and I'm energetic and I'm giving, that's not necessarily considered emotional, but it is. So let's see where we are. If we can please sort of uh, share the results, Sergio, on that one to see if people perceive being emotional as bad. I'd like to see where we are. So uh, no, this is great. So look at this. So we have kind of like a divide, right? Where most of us disagree that emotional is not, um, sorry, is not perceived as bad, but we have 52% that have put context that sometimes, and that leads exactly to what I was just talking about, where it, we sometimes think emotional is being bad, especially when we're playing with those emotions that we consider quote unquote negative. So hopefully we're gonna change this frame of mind and offer some new insight here where we will be able to open it up a little bit more. What if we actually looked at our emotions not as good or bad, but instead as having purpose and function, no matter what the emotion is? So think about it. Our emotions, number one, help us to motivate action or help us to prepare physically. And this goes back to kind of like our, our prehistoric days where survival and emotions like fear served a function. It was about survival. So our emotions would tell us if we're feeling fear in particular, that there was something to worry about and perhaps our lives were in danger. So we would be motivated to either hide or act in a different way that was gonna protect ourselves. So fear is not a bad emotion. It motivated us and helped us to prepare physically to deal with something to help us survive. Today, they also help us to inform our decisions and our reactions, right? So emotions tell us that something matters to us. Again, whether it's a quote unquote, what we deem as negative or positive, emotions tell us that something matters, the issue matters. If you got angry about something, it's because you care. If you didn't care, you would not get angry about it. So it shows you or it informs you that this subject matter or whatever it is that's upsetting you is something you care about. So again, let's not label it as negative. Emotions also help us communicate with other people about how we're feeling because some of our communication is universal. Like I said, sometimes, you know, tearing or crying is associated with sadness. So therefore it communicates to someone else that perhaps this person's not okay. So again, looking at our emotions as having purpose and function changes the way that we think about it, changes the stigma that we've associated with certain emotions. And if you can look at it from this light, again, I think it really opens up that door for us to have more compassion towards others as well as ourselves. The other 
concept I'd like to introduce you to right now is that we have different emotions like anger, sadness, shame, guilt, fear, love, happiness. These are all emotions that we're very, very familiar with. What we don't realize though, is that we have, we tend to have a reaction or a neg, uh, sorry, primary emotion that's sort of underlying. And what happens then is that because of our interpretation of that emotion itself, we experience a secondary one. So th our situations when we face them, it's like COVID-19 and like the social issues that we're seeing today, it's not very simple. It's not one layer there. Our emotions are stacked upon each other. And it's when we peel these back and truly understand what's happening that we can deal with the actual essence and core of what's going on. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. My husband is a wonderful man. He's a first responder firefighter. And he's gone through some really difficult times in his life, uh, both as a person, experienced a lot of loss, as well as a firefighter being exposed to trauma. And so what happens is that because of the fear, uh, sorry, because of the losses that he's had at a very young age, when we got together, he had a real hesitation to love. And his hesitation to love was that if he loved something again or someone again, that he was going to lose them again. So th there was a fear there. And what was happening is every time I was going out and doing something or I wanted to, you know, go into, a, let's say, a place where he felt there was a level of risk, he would get angry at me. So for example, his primary emotion is fear. He now interprets that that fear is loss and me wanting to go out to do something is being very risky and therefore it shows up as anger. And of course, what I see is the anger. And so I can choose now to react to that anger and get angry myself and get all defensive. But instead, what I tried to do was peel it back. And what we've discovered is that it's not that he's angry at me for wanting to do stuff. It's there is a fear of loss underlying that anger. And so it's through conversation and through peeling back this onion that we were actually able to discover that. So just remember that when we see someone having a very strong emotion to something, it's very unlikely that we're seeing the actual primary emotion right off the bat. It's probably layered by different interpretations and more emotions on top. So we need to kind of get through that, um, the, the, the secondary and, and even third layer, fourth layer emotions to actually get to what the issue is. So I hope that you just kind of look at the fact that, again, emotions are so multi-layered and um, they kind of impact each other and how we interpret our emotions affects things. So here's the, here's the news with COVID, right? This has been a, such an emotional roller coaster for, for so many of us. Uh, I know that when this first kind of came out, I was like, oh, wow, now I have all this time at home to do some of the things that I haven't had time for. I'm going to just, you know, embrace this time and, and, and make the most out of it. And then I found myself working longer hours than I ever have before. And I was burning myself out very, very quickly. And so then it was like, take another step back and reflect again and kind of come back at this one more time. And I'm under constant adjustment, or that's the way it's been feeling, adapting ups and downs and trying to manage the kids and manage, you know, my husband going to work and manage running up my businesses. And it's just been really, really overwhelming. And so we can often feel like this emotional roller coaster is out of control, right? We can't control the speed of the train. We can't control whether it's going up or down. We're just on this ride. And sometimes that in of itself can be very overwhelming. So I'm going to ask you one more time here on poll number three. I feel like I'm on an emotional roller coaster. Can we launch this poll and find out how many of you out there feel like you've been on this emotional roller coaster with me because I tell you it's been absolutely I feel like it's been insane that you know I've been up I've been down I've been energetic I've been tired I've been sad I've been happy I've been angry a lot of the time too you know I my tolerance level has been less 
So how many of you have kind of been going through something like that? Some of us have probably gone feeling anxious and some of us have been feeling depressed. Some of us have just been saying, hey, I'm going to get through this and doing what you can and finding the joy in the, in the smaller moments. So how many of us? Let's see what, what the, sh uh, let's share the results, Sergio, to see how the audience is feeling, um, whether they feel like they've been on this roller coaster, this COVID roller coaster. Yeah, 80%. That, that's not surprising, folks. And that's why I thought it was really important to have this conversation today. Number one, recognize that you're not alone. 80% of you have been feeling this way. And so it's really, really important that we take the information that we've gathered today and that we learn that expressing our emotions is very, very important. We don't want to be packing them in because how many of you know that when you pack your emotions inside, you start to feel them in your body and it starts to be very painful. And so we need to give ourselves the permission to be human at this time because here's the thing. Our bodies and our brain is are wired that if pain becomes unbearable, we are programmed to want to end the pain. And so how many of you know that when your emotions become absolutely overwhelming, we can feel it in our chest, we can feel it in our stomach, we can feel it like we can't breathe, we can get the headaches that you know plague us. And when the physical pain becomes unbearable, your brain is going to start telling you, I want you to stop that pain, knock it off, do whatever you have to do to knock it off. And that's where we can sometimes creep into feeling hopeless and helpless, which then leads us to the downward spiral of having suicidal thoughts. I want you to recognize that suicidal thoughts are not abnormal. They are a natural response to when our pain becomes unbearable, both emotional, physical, and when you know we feel hopeless and helpless. But that is the time that it is absolutely essential that we reach out and connect. And I know that people feel like they don't want to connect at that time because there's an embarrassment or perhaps some shame. And what I'm hoping to do is to change your minds and let you know that there is no shame in that. It's a natural human response. And what we need to recognize mm -hmm. is that we don't have to go it alone. And that when we connect with somebody else and express how we're feeling, perhaps they will be able to find some resources, some solutions, some simple ways that can help you feel more connected and more supported. And that's what we need. Having suicidal thoughts doesn't mean you want to die. It just simply is a sign that you don't want to live like this anymore. So let's change the this. And we can't do that when we're totally on our own. So it's very important right now that we use the time and give ourselves the permission to be human and open up that door to other people that perhaps aren't getting the benefit of this webinar today and that could use this type of information. I would also like to empower you that now that you have this background around your emotions, you have a choice. You have a choice now to choose to respond versus react. And I, because having this knowledge of how your emotions work, you're going to have more awareness and you're going to be able to exercise that choice. You'll be able to resort to more logic and facts about your situation that you're facing and then understand what the consequences of your actions are. And then you'll be able to choose which is the better pathway to take. I'd love to give you a quick example of what that is. And so, for example, in my own household again, you know, I ran into a situation that was extremely upsetting to me. And I went from zero to a hundred in a matter of seconds. And I just wanted to, to unload and unleash. And what I did instead is actually take a breath and just say, okay, hold on. If I completely explode right now, chances are he's going to explode. And this is going to turn into a big mess. And we don't need that extra stress right now. So hold on. That's not going to work right now. Let me instead, I took a breath again and I said, okay, I think I need to let him know how I feel about this, but I'm going to choose to talk about it and I'm going to bring it up 
and in a good calm manner and try to express myself that way. And so I'm going to choose to respond to the situation versus react. And instead what I did was I sat back and I said to him, I said, listen, I would like to share something with you today. Um, however, I would like you not to get upset right away. I would like you to kind of listen to what my intention is and try to hear where I'm coming from. So I kind of prefaced the conversation a little bit and I was able to say that, look, this really upsets me. This is why it upsets me. And I'm really trying to keep my own emotions at bay right now because I am making a huge effort that I want us to move forward from this situation rather than to get into a big fight about it. This is something that I would like to address but we need to find some ways to do it. And I'm hoping that by my sharing this with you, that we'll be able to do that together. I know this is hard to do folks. It's taken me years to get here. So I, I don't want you to think that, okay, that won't work for me. It does. It takes practice. Um, and it takes all, like we're, we're all learning and evolving as we go and, you know, dealing with new situations like this, like COVID, this is not the last, we are going to be seeing more situations that are just as stressful. So we need to start working and practicing on building these skills. And I just want you to know that it doesn't just stop, you know, being an expert on this and an expert on that doesn't make me immune. I'm only human and continually adopting and adapting my own ways and learning about how to use these strategies myself. I'd like us to take a quick, quick moment, if you don't mind, to do this wonderful exercise. And this is a mindfulness body scan. And what I would love you to do is to do this for each of the emotions. If you could, after um, watching this webinar today or perhaps in the next few days, is on a piece of paper, write down a list of emotions like sadness, happiness, anger, you know, all the different emotions that you think. There's about six or seven primary emotions that we generally feel, and then we describe them differently. So anger would be the top emotion. And anger leads to frustration, irritability, annoyance, things like that. We describe it with using other words. So become aware of the different language that we associate with the emotion, each one, and then go through this process of a mindfulness body scan with each emotion. Because what this will help you build is an actual system to identify when these emotions are emerging inside of you. So what you wanna do is to actually note how does it show up? If we had a lot of time today, I would run you through two of them. I would run you through, let's say one of sadness or anger, and then I would then move you into doing one on happiness or love. So today, just to end this off on a, on a really positive note, I would love to take this moment and run you through one on love. And then, like I said, take this exercise and do it again with all the different emotions, including sadness, anger, shame, um, and so forth, because you need to know how all the emotions show up for you. Sometimes we're gonna find that the physical responses are the same. So for example, nervousness and excitement, they both are very different emotions, but they show up in my body the same. I get the butterflies in my stomach. So I'm aware of this now. And so then when I get those butterflies, I take a moment and I'm thinking, okay, is this nervousness or is this excitement? And I kind of, I'm able to discern things a little bit better and make better choices. So that's the purpose of this exercise. So let's go through this right now together. I'd love you to sit up in your chairs and I would love you to put your two feet on the ground, your hands in your lap, and just take a quick, beautiful, deep breath in and out. Let's do another one. Let's go in and out. And now, as your eyes are closed, I'd like you to really think about someone you absolutely love, somebody that just warms your heart and somebody that you just, just looking at their beautiful face just lights you up because they make you laugh, they make you feel good. You just love this person absolutely immensely. They are such an important part of your life. Think about the last time that you guys actually like laughed together and you had a moment of joy with this person. 
take yourself back there. What were you doing? What were they wearing? What were they saying? Go right back to that moment. Now notice what is happening in your body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Where is the energy going? Where are you feeling this love for this person? Where is it sitting with you? How does it feel? What are some of the thoughts that come to your mind? So just notice them. Identify where they are and acknowledge them that that's love. We're going to have absolutely no judgment it's wherever it shows up, even if it's in your littlest toe. There's absolutely no judgment. And note where those physical responses are. Note the thoughts that you are having right now. Note if you're tingling just all over. And when you're ready, come back. Wonderful. And so this is a, an exercise, like I said, that it would be really helpful if you could run yourself through each emotion so that you can get a better understanding of how emotions work within yourself. And it's by building that awareness, like I said, that we can then accept and acknowledge our emotions and we can still feel these emotions then freely without them taking control, because then we will have a better understanding again of what we're feeling and why. This really creates a great bandwidth for us to be able to express and feel all our emotions without judgment and without guilt. I really hope that uh, you have found this helpful and um, that this really helps to serve you as you kind of go forward. And, and feel free to share some of this information with other people as well. And I hope that the presentation was helpful.